Hello everyone! Welcome to another online math class. I am Sir Mark and I will be your guide throughout this lesson. For today's video, we will be discussing our lesson under Module 3, Week 3 of the third quarter, which is about solving problems involving parallelograms, trapezoids, and kites. Since we are now in problem solving, dapat alam natin yung mga different properties and theorems ng parallelograms. So kasama sa parallelogram si rectangle, rhombus, at square ha, trapezoid, and kite. Para mas madali nating masolve ang mga problems na ito. Actually, kung naaalala nyo, lagi naman ako nagbibigay ng problems every after ng properties and theorems na madiscuss natin. Pero syempre, Kung gusto nyong i-review at mapanood ulit yung mga lectures natin tungkol sa mga properties and theorems na ito, ilalagay ko na lang sa description box yung mga links ng videos na ito para pwede nyo pa rin mapanood. Alright, now let's have our first problem. MARK is a parallelogram. The measure of angle M is equal to 5X. And the measure of angle K is equal to 2x plus 12. Find the measure of angle A. Tandaan na, ang sabi sa ating problem that MARK is a parallelogram daw. So first thing to do para mas maunawaan natin yung kinasabi ng problem na ito is to illustrate the problem. Okay? So i-illustrate muna natin si Parallelogram MARK. So, ito yung ating parallelogram MARK. Alright? So, mas maganda na i-drawing nyo muna siya ha, para mas makita natin kung ano yung sinasabi ng problem. Alright? So, ito yung ating parallelogram MARK. Sabi sa problem, the measure of angle M daw is equal to 5X. So, ilagay natin siya sa ating illustration. Okay? Next. Sabi rin sa ating problem that the measure of angle K is equal to 2x plus 12. So, ilagay din natin siya. Alright? Ayan. So, ang pinapahanap sa ating problem is the measure of angle A. So, paano natin mahahanap si measure of angle A? E wala naman binigay na information tungkol sa kanya. Alright? So, actually, hindi muna natin mahahanap si measure of angle A agad-agad. So, ang kailangan muna natin gawin Dahil meron tayo ditong variable, ay hanapin muna natin yung value, value ng variable na iyon. So in this case, yung value ni x ang hahanapin muna natin. Alright? And to solve for the value of x, kailangan gamitin muna natin yung available na information na binigay sa ating problem. So dito sa problem, ang binigay lang sa atin ay yung measure ni angle m at yung measure ni angle k. Alright? So yun muna ang gagamitin natin to solve for the value of x. Alright? So, remember, this is a parallelogram. Okay? Ano ba ang relationship ni angle M kay angle K? Kasi sila lang yung angles na may, na may binigay na information, di ba? So, ngayon, kailangan alamin muna natin ano yung relationship ni angle M kay angle K. Ano yon? Okay, that angle M and angle K are consecutive angles. Ano ba ang sinasabi? ng properties ng parallelogram regarding consecutive angles. That, in a parallelogram, consecutive angles are supplementary. Ano nga ulit ang ibig sabihin pag sinabing supplementary? Pag sinabing supplementary, the sum of these angles is equal to 180 degrees. Okay, so kailangan ipakita natin that angle M and angle K are supplementary. Alright, so that would be the measure of angle M plus the measure of angle K is equal to 180 degrees. Alright? So, ayan na. Pinakita na natin na supplementary sila. Ngayon, ang pwede natin gawin, since we are talking about the measures of these angles, pwede na tayong mag-substitute. So, palitan na natin si measure of angle M ng 5X plus the measure of angle K, palitan na rin natin siya ng 2X plus 12 which is equal to 180. Alright? Kaya, magkakaroon na tayo dito ng 5x plus 2x plus 12 is equal to 180. Next thing to do, I 
mag-combine like terms tayo para simplified na yung ating left side ng ating equation. So in this case, sino ba yung pwede nating ma-combine dito? Sino ba yung magka-like terms dito? Sina? Alright, 5x and 2x. And we know that 5x plus 2x is equal to, very good, 7x. Then copy na lang natin si plus 12 is equal to 180 degrees. Next thing to do, pwede na natin i-transpose si positive 12 papuntang right side of the equation para ang makumbine naman natin yung mga terms na walang variable. Okay, so lipat na natin si 12. Tandaan na, pag naglipat or nag-transpose, magbabago ang sign. Okay, so that would become 7x is equal to 180 minus 12. So kung napansin, from positive 12, nung nilipat natin siya o tinranspose natin siya to the right side of the equation, naging negative 12 na siya. Alright? And then, pwede na natin isimplify yan. So we know that 180 minus 12 is equal to, okay, 168. Kaya the resulting linear equation would be 7x is equal to 168. Alright? And from here, pwede na natin masolve ang value ng x. Ano pa nung gagawin para masolve ang value ng x? All we have to do is to divide both sides by 7. Para makancel na natin yung numerical coefficient ng x natin sa left side ng equation. Alright, so cancel na natin yung 7. Kaya ang matitira na lang sa left side ay si x. Now, doon naman tayo sa right side. 168 divided by 7. The answer is... Very good. 24. Therefore, the value of x is equal to 24. Alright? Now, meron na tayong value ng x. At dahil meron na tayong value ng x, pwede na nating masolve ang measure ni angle A. Okay? And for this, para masolve natin ang measure ni angle A, meron tayong dalawang choice. Na relationship na pwede nating gamitin. Okay? So, pwede nating gamitin yung relationship ni angle A at ni angle M, which is consecutive angles. At alam naman natin na sa parallelogram, consecutive angles ay parallelogram. So, pwede nating gamitin yan ulit. Okay? Pwede nating gamitin na the measure of angle A plus the measure of angle M is equal to 180 degrees. Pwede rin nating gamitin yung relationship ni angle A at ni angle K. Ano ba sila? Ano ba ang relationship ni angle A at ni angle K? That they are opposite angles. E ano ba ang sinasabi ng properties ng parallelogram regarding opposite angles? That in a parallelogram, any two opposite angles are congruent. Okay? Pero dito sa ating problem, ang gagamitin kong relationship ay yung relationship ni angle A at ni angle K. Okay, tandaan na, angle K and angle K are opposite angles. And we know that in a parallelogram, opposite angles are congruent. Okay, so meron na tayong value ng X which is 24. So pwede natin kunin ang value ng measure of angle A. Alright, so yun ang gagamitin nating relationship ha. So pwede na natin sabihin that angle A is congruent to angle K. Kasi nga, they are opposite angles of a parallelogram. Since they are, these two angles are congruent, ibig sabihin that their measures are equal. Kaya, the measure of angle A is equal to the measure of angle K. Alright? Since we are now talking about their measures, pwede na tayong mag-substitute. Okay? So, since ang inahanap natin ay si measure of angle A, retain lang siya dyan. Now, ang pwede natin palitan ay yung measure ni angle K. That would be, measure of angle A is equal to yung measure ni angle K, which is 2x plus 12. Alright? And from here, pwede na natin isubstitute yung value ng x, which is 24. So, papalitan na natin si x ng 24. Alright? So, that would become the measure of angle A is equal to 2 times the value of x, which is 24, plus 12. Alright? Then, simplify muna natin yung 2 times 24. We know that 2 times 24 is equal to very good. That's 48. Kaya, magkakaroon tayo ng the measure of angle A is equal to 48 plus 12. And from here, pwede na natin masolve ang measure ni angle A. Paano gagawin? Simplify na lang natin. We know that 48 plus 12 is equal to 60. Therefore, the measure of angle A is equal to 60. So, yan ang hinahanap natin 
measure ni angle A. Alright? Problem number 2. RYAN is a rhombus with diagonals RA and YN. The measure of segment NO is equal to 6Y minus 5. And the measure of segment YO is equal to 3Y plus 7. Find the value of Y. So first thing to do para masolve natin itong problem na ito, ay illustrate muna natin yung sinasabi ng problem. Alright, so sabi sa ating problem that RYAN is a rhombus daw with diagonals RA and YN. So ito ang ating illustration. So this is rhombus RYAN. So kung papansinin, ang mga diagonals natin ay si diagonal RA at si, at si diagonal YN. Okay? Then, pwede rin nating ilagay na yung mga binigay sa ating problem, yung mga given. Alright? So sabi sa problem that the measure of segment NO is equal to 6Y minus 5. So ilagay natin siya. Ito siya. Okay? Next, ilagay na rin natin yung measure ni segment YO which is 3Y plus 7. So yan, lagay na rin natin dyan. Okay, so ayan na. Kitang-kita na natin yung ating problem. Kitang-kita na siya sa illustration. Okay, so we are asked to find for the value of y. Alright, so paano natin gagawin yun? So since ang involved sa problem natin ay diagonals of this rhombus, ano ba yung sinasabi ng theorem regarding the, the diagonals of a rhombus? So ang sabi doon, that the diagonals of a rhombus are perpendicular and bisect each other. So tandaan na, bisect each other. Ano bang ibig sabihin ng bisect? Pag sinabing bisect, they divide each other into two congruent parts. Kinahati nila yung isa't isa into two congruent parts. Alright? So, ibig sabihin, yung mga segment na nabuo dyan, sa bawat diagonals natin ay congruent sa isa't isa. Alright? Therefore, since ang given natin dito ay si segment NO at si segment YO, ibig sabihin, they're congruent to each other. Tama? Kasi si diagonal YN ay nabisect ni diagonal RA. Alright? So, pwede na natin gamitin yung relationship na yun. Okay? Pwede na natin sabihin na yung dalawang segment na yan ay congruent sa isa't isa. So, that would be segment NO is congruent to segment YO. Alright? Since they are congruent to each other, ibig sabihin that their measures are equal. Kaya, pwede natin sabihin that the measure of segment NO is equal to the measure of segment YO. Alright? At dahil sinabi na natin na equal na yung mga measures nila at measurement na ang pinag-uusapan natin, pwede na tayong mag-substitute. Okay, papalitan na natin si measure of segment NO ng binigay dun sa ating problem na given. So, that would be 6y minus 5, which is equal to yung value ng yo natin na binigay sa ating problem. So, that would be 3y plus 7. Alright, kaya meron na tayo ditong equation na 6y minus 5 is equal to 3y plus 7. Anong susunod na gagawin? Next thing to do, pagsamasamay na natin yung magkakalike terms. Okay, kaya magta-transpose na tayo. Alright, so si, sa left side, ililipat natin doon yung si negative 5 papuntang right side. Pag nilipat natin si negative 5, magiging positive 5 na siya. Alright? Then, dito naman sa right side, ang ililipat natin ay si 3y. Pag nilipat natin si 3y papuntang left side, magbabago din ang sign niya. So, from positive, magiging negative din siya. Alright? So, ngayon, itranspose na natin yung mga dapat natin itranspose. So, the resulting equation would be 6y Minus 3y is equal to 7 plus 5. Alright, so take note ha, yung mga tinranspose natin, dapat nagbago ang sign ha. Huwag kakalimutan yun. Okay? Now, pwede na tayong mag-simplify. Dito muna tayo sa ating left side of the equation. Si 6y minus 3y. What is 6y minus 3y? That is 
Okay, 6y minus 3y is equal to 3y, which is equal to 7 plus 5. The answer is, okay, it's 12. Now, pwede na tayong mag-solve ng value ni y. So, paano, nat paano natin gagawin yun? All we have to do is to divide both sides by 3. Para makancel na natin yung 3 na numerical coefficient ni y. Doon sa left side ng ating equation. Okay? So, ayan. I-cancel na natin si 3. So, ang matitira na lang sa left side ay si y. Which is equal to 12 divided by 3. What is 12 divided by 3? The answer is 4. Therefore, the value of y is equal to 4. So, yan ang inahanap natin. Alright? Problem number 3. MATH is an isosceles trapezoid where angle M and angle A are base angles. The measure of angle M is equal to 60. And the measure of angle A is equal to 3x plus 15. Find the value of x. So first thing to do para masagutan natin ang problem na ito, kailangan i-illustrate muna natin kung ano yung sinasabi ng problem. Alright, para ma-picture out natin kung ano ba yung itsura ng problem. Alright, so ang sabi sa problem that MATH is an isosceles trapezoid. Remember, isosceles trapezoid is a trapezoid whose legs are congruent. Alright, tapos itong isosceles trapezoid na to, meron daw siyang base angles na angle M and angle A. Alright, so ngayon, I-illustrate na natin si isosceles trapezoid M-A-T-H. So, ayan, si ating isosceles trapezoid M-A-T-H. So, kailangan ba nakabaligtad yung ating trapezoid? Hindi naman. Alright? Basta tama lang yung labeling natin. Okay? At syempre, dapat si angle M daw at si angle A ay base angles. Alright? So, yun yung mga dapat nating i-consider. Alright? So, ngayon, Ano lang susunod natin gagawin? So, since meron na tayong isosceles trapezoid MATH, pwede na rin natin ilagay yung mga given na binigay sa ating problem. Alright? So, sino ba yung mga binigay dito? Nagbigay dito ng measure ni angle M, which is equal to 60. So, ngayon, ilagay natin siya dito. Alright? Next, binigay din sa atin yung measure ni angle A, which is equal to 3x plus 15. So, ayan, ilagay na rin natin. Yan, kompleto na yung ating illustration. Okay? Ngayon, ang pinapahanap sa atin is the value of x. Paano natin masasolve ang value ng x? So, syempre, masasolve natin yan by using yung mga information na binigay ng ating problem. So, ang binigay lang sa atin, yung measure ni angle M at yung measure ni angle A. Alright? So, since this is an isosceles trapezoid, Ano ba ang relationship ni angle M at ni angle A? Alright? So, kailangan alam natin eh, na isosceles trapezoid to, tapos ang binigay lang na information sa atin, ay measure ni angle M at measure ni angle A. So, ano ba yung relationship ng dalawang angle na yan? That, angle M and angle A are, okay, base angles of an isosceles trapezoid. So, binigay na siya, stated na naman siya sa ating problem eh. Ayan o. Oh, where angle M and angle A are base angles. Kaya ano ba ang sinasabi ng theorem regarding base angles of an isosceles trapezoid? So, ang sabi doon, that the base angles of an isosceles trapezoid are congruent. So, pwede natin gamitin yung relationship na yon para masolve natin yung value ng X. Okay? So, since angle M and angle A are base angles, ibig sabihin they are congruent. So, pwede nating sabihin that, the, that angle M is congruent to angle A. Alright? Kasi nga, base angle sila ng ating isosceles trapezoid. And the base angles of an isosceles trapezoid are congruent to each other. Now, since they are congruent to each other, ibig sabihin that their measures are equal. Okay? Kaya pwede nating sabihin that the measure of angle M is equal to the measure of angle A. Alright? Now, ayan na. Nasabi na natin na equal na ang measures ng dalawang angles na yan. Okay? Ngayon, pwede na tayong mag-substitute. Alright? So, palitan na natin yung measure ni angle M ng 
60, which is equal to yung measure ni angle A, which is 3x plus 15. Alright? Now, ano nang susunod na gagawin? So, next thing to do, pwede na natin i-transpose si 15 papuntang left side of the equation. Bakit si 15 ang itatranspose, hindi si 3x? Kasi pag si 3x ang tinranspose natin papuntang left side, magkakaroon tayo ng negative na numerical coefficient. So, para maiwasan ng pagkakamali, hindi na natin siya i-transpose. Ang transpose na lang natin si 15. Okay, so tandaan na pag nag-transpose tayo, magbabago ang sign. So, si 15, ililipat natin mapuntang left side of the equation. So, that would become 60 minus 15 is equal to 3x. Alright? Then, pwede na natin i-combine yan. Pwede na natin i-simplify yan. 60 minus 15 is equal to, very good, it's 45, which is equal to 3x. And to solve for x, ano nang gagawin natin? Okay, we divide both sides by 3 para makancel na natin yung numerical coefficient ng x doon sa ating right side ng equation. Okay, so ngayon, cancel na natin si 3. Ang matitira na lang sa right side ay si x. Okay, now, what is 45 divided by 3? 45 divided by 3 is equal to 15. Okay, kaya magkakaroon tayo ng 15 is equal to x or that would be x is equal to 15 by the symmetric property of equality. So, yun ang value ng x na hinahanap natin. x is equal to 15. Okay? Problem number 4. EASY is a kite. The measure of angle A is equal to 3x plus 5. And the measure of angle Y is equal to 4x minus 30. Find the measure of angle Y. Again, first thing to do para masagutan natin ang problem na ito is to illustrate kung ano man yung sinasabi ng ating problem para mas madali natin ma-picture out yung problem. Alright? So again, ang sabi sa problem natin that EASY is a kite. So kailangan illustrate mo na natin yun. Alright, so this is our kite EASY. Alright, so ngayon, dahil meron na tayong illustration, pwede na nating ilagay dito yung mga information na binigay sa ating problem. Ano ba yung mga information na binigay sa atin? So sabi dito that the measure of angle A is equal to 3x plus 5. So ilagay natin yung 3x plus 5 kay angle A. Alright, so, ayan. Next. Ano pa yung isang information na sinabi o binigay sa ating problem? The measure of angle Y. So, ang sabi dito, that the measure of angle Y is equal to 4x minus 30. So, ilagay natin siya dito kay angle Y. Alright? So, ang pinapahanap sa atin sa problem na ito is the measure of angle Y. Yung exact measure ni angle Y. Okay? Pero, bago natin ma-solve, yung measure ni angle Y, kailangan mahanap muna natin yung value na ating variable, which is si X. Okay? Kasi hindi natin mahanap yung measure ni angle Y pag hindi pa natin alam yung value ng X. So, yun muna ang kailangan natin hanapin, yung value ng X. Alright? At paano natin masosolve ang value ng X? So, wala naman tayo ibang paraan para masolve ang value ng X, kundi gamitin yung mga information na available sa ating problem. At ano ba yung mga information na available? Yung measure ni angle A at yung measure ni angle Y. Alright? So ngayon, tignan natin. Maghanap tayo ngayon ng relationship ni angle A kay angle Y. Ano kaya ang relationship nila with each other? That angle A and angle Y are very good. They are one pair of opposite angles sa ating kite. Opposite angle sila. Isang pare sila ng opposite angles ng ating kite, EASY. Alright? E di ba, merong sinasabi sa theorem ng kite regarding one pair of opposite angles ng kite. At ano yon? Ano nga ulit yung sabi doon? Sabi doon, if a quadrilateral is a kite, then exactly one pair of opposite angles are congruent. So sa kite daw, meron dyang 
exactly one pair o isang pares ng opposite angles na congruent. Alright? At kung titignan natin yung ating illustration, masasabi natin na si angle A at si angle Y, yung tinutukoy na yon ng theorem na one pair of opposite angles na congruent. Kasi kung titignan nyo, si angle E at si angle S, hindi naman sila mukhang congruent. Alright? So ngayon, pwede na natin gamitin yung relationship na yon. We can now say that angle A is congruent to angle Y. Alright? At since silang dalawa, silang dalawang angle ay congruent to each other, ibig sabihin that their measures are equal. Therefore, we could say that the measure of angle A is equal to the measure of angle Y. Alright? So dahil ang pinag-uusapan na natin dito ay measurement, pwede na tayong mag-substitute. Palitan na natin yung measure ni angle A ng 3x plus 5, which is equal to, palitan na rin natin yung measure ni angle Y, which is 4x minus 30. Alright? Now, so meron na tayong 3x plus 5 is equal to 4x minus 30. Okay, so ano na ang susunod na gagawin natin? Ang kailangan na natin gawin ay mag-transpose na tayo ng mga dapat i-transpose para magkakasama na sa magkaparehong side yung mga magkakalike terms. Okay, so ngayon, tignan nyo. Sa left side, nandun yung 3x. Tapos sa right side, nandun yung 4x. So ang gagawin natin, instead na si 4x ang ililipat natin papuntang left side, si 3x na lang ang ililipat natin. Bakit si 3x na lang? Para maiwasan natin na magkaroon tayo ng negative na numerical coefficient para maiwasan na rin natin ang pagkakamali. Okay? Kaya ang gawin na lang natin, si 3x na lang ang ililipat natin papuntang right side. Tandaan, pag tayo nag-transpose, magbabago ng sign. Okay, then sa right side, ang ililipat naman natin ay si negative 30. Ililipat natin siya papuntang left side of the equation. At pag nilipat natin si negative 30, magiging positive 30 na siya. Alright? At kapag nag nagawa na natin ang pagta-transpose, this would be the resulting linear equation. So this would become 5 plus 30. Kung napansin, yung negative 30 naging positive 30 na. Which is equal to 4x minus 3x. Kasi nga, si 3x... Nung chin-transpose natin, papuntang right side, nagbago ang sign. Naging negative 3x na siya. Alright? Ngayon, meron na tayong 5 plus 30 is equal to 4x minus 3x. Then, pwede na tayong mag-combine like terms. Okay? So, simplify na natin yung left side. So, we know that 5 plus 30 is equal to, very good, it's 35, which is equal to 4x minus 3x, that is x. Alright? So, meron na tayo dito 35 is equal to x. So, actually, yan na yung value na x. Pero, syempre, by the symmetric property, para mas makita nyo ng maayos, by the symmetric property of equality, we could say that x is equal to 35. Okay? So, that is the value of x. So, tandaan na, yan ang value ng ating x. 35. Now, dahil meron na tayong value ng x, pwede na natin isolve ang value na ni angle y. Okay? So, we could now solve for angle Y. So, again, the measure of angle Y is equal to 4X minus 30. Okay, so, paano gagawin natin? All we have to do is to substitute the value of X. So, ang X natin ay 35, di ba? So, palitan na natin si X ng 35. So, we now have 4 times the value of X. That is 4 times 35 minus 30. And we know that 4 times 35 is equal to what? 4 times 35 is equal to 140 minus 30. And we know that 140 minus 30, the answer is 110. So the measure of angle Y is equal to 110. So yan ang hinahanap natin. So the measure of angle Y is equal to 110. Alright? Alright, so that's our discussion regarding solving problems involving parallelograms, trapezoids, and kites. If ever na meron pa kayong questions on this lesson, do not hesitate to comment your questions below or mag-send ng private message sa aking Facebook account. Until the next video, bye-bye!